Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States Navy has an impressive fleet, including some of the world's best destroyers, frigates, and aircraft carriers. These humongous vessels are the centerpieces of U.S. amphibious warfare, which is why they are equipped with state-of-the-art built-in weapon systems. Since 2017, the United States Office of Naval Research, ONR, has invested billions of dollars to develop new naval weapon systems. One such weapon system is the railgun, which works like a cannon but uses electromagnetic forces to launch high-velocity projectiles at speeds exceeding 4,500 miles per hour. The railgun is unique as it relies on the speed of mass and kinetic energy of the projectile instead of using explosives to inflict damage on the target. It has a 30-foot long barrel consisting of two rails with a projectile in between. current is passed down one rail, through the projectile, and back through the other rail. This creates a magnetic field around the current in the rails, which generates a tremendous propulsion force that launches the projectile out of the rail gun. Electromagnetic railgun is a gun that uses just electricity, no gunpowder, and oh, by the way, can shoot a projectile like this well over 100 miles at Mach 7. The U.S. Navy conducts live fire testing at the U.S. Navy Dahlgren Division using an 8 megajoule railgun, which serves as a prototype for the 64 megajoule weapon intended for warship. The prototype railgun can shoot 7.1 pound projectiles. However, the energy required to launch these projectiles has varied over the years. On January 31st, 2008, the U.S. Navy tested a 10.64 megajoule railgun and launched projectiles that traveled at a speed of 8,270 feet per second and covered up to 100 miles. Engineers and researchers monitor the railgun from a control room and collect relative data. According to the data acquired from these tests, if the railgun is installed on normal naval ships, it would not have enough electricity to operate. Current estimates suggest that only highly advanced Zumwalt-class destroyers could fire the weapon. Apart from the railgun, several live-fire exercises are conducted at the U.S. Navy Dahlgren Division 
to evaluate the performance of advanced naval weapons before installing them on the ships. For instance, on August 30th, 2016, the U.S. Navy conducted a live fire exercise using a Mark 46 mounted on the amphibious transport dock ship USS Green Bay, LPD-20. It can fire 200 rounds per minute and has a range of just over two miles. The requirement documents for the USS Zumwalt ship program included the need for weapon systems capable of defeating small, fast, highly maneuverable surface vessels. The USS Zumwalt destroyer is a 610 foot long and 80 foot wide ship that executes various surface, undersea, and aviation missions. On October 13th, USS Zumwalt achieved a significant milestone by successfully launching a standard missile, SM-2, for the first time with the Mark 57 vertical launch system. The USS Zumwalt demonstrated its capability to detect, track, and engage an anti-ship cruise missile threat with an SM-2. During this demonstration, the crew assessed the material readiness of the ship against shock and vibration of the weapon firing and measured hazards and degradations as a result of firing the SM-2. The live fire test was a success and proof of USS Zumwalt's ability to operate in both the open ocean and near shore environments, creating a new level of battle space complexity for potential adversaries. Large ships require extraordinary self-defense weapon systems to survive at sea. These cutting-edge systems incorporate a combination of offensive and defensive capabilities, providing the ship with exceptional combat effectiveness. The weapon system comprises the 50 caliber machine guns, which come in handy against aerial threats. They fire 50 caliber rounds at a rapid rate and have a range of up to 2,000 meters with a cyclical rate of 550 to 850 rounds per minute. Additionally, the muzzle velocity of these machine guns is approximately 2,900 feet per second and its armor-piercing ability makes it ideal for engaging ground and air threats. In 1973, an automated weapons defense system was developed that changed the course of naval warfare. The Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, or CIWS, is the last line of defense on a ship that automatically defends against all incoming threats, including anti-ship missiles, aircraft, and small boats.
It incorporates a radar-guided 20mm Vulcan Gatling gun with a firing rate of up to 4,500 rounds per minute. Phalanx CIWS activates and neutralizes incoming targets within a close range of approximately one to two nautical miles. Loading CIWS is not an easy task. The sailors must perform the critical task of reloading ammunition with utmost precision. The ammunition is inserted continuously into the drum magazine of failing CIWS, enabling it to engage and respond to successive threats. Each round is meticulously loaded, ensuring compatibility with the rapid fire mechanism of the weapon system. Phalanx CIWS is typically loaded with armor-piercing discarding Sabot, APDS, and high-explosive incendiary, HEI, 20mm rounds, which are usually mixed while reloading. To ensure that the Phalanx CIWS is deployed quickly against potential threats, the U.S. Navy conducts targeted and untargeted drills frequently. On October 5th, 2017, a pre-action aim calibration, pack exercise, was conducted aboard the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln using Phalanx CIWS. The demonstration consists of up to three bursts in both a high rate of fire and a low rate of fire from the Phalanx CIWS. What we're going to be doing tonight, it's a uh, pre-aim calibration. We fire the gun to make sure that the gun and the radar are pointing in the same direction so when we do have incoming, the, um, when the radar is tracking the round, the gun is pointing at the round, so when we fire, hopefully we hit it. The U.S. Navy also conducts Detect to Engage DTE exercises to assess the performance of the failing CIWS against low-flying aerial threats. During these demonstrations, the ship's automated radar tracking system is specifically tested by detecting a low-flying P-8 Poseidon and providing real-time data to the failing CIWS. The weapon system identifies the target and engages with a burst of rapid-fire projectiles, neutralizing the target with speed and accuracy. The DTE exercise challenges the failing CIWS to defend the ship against low-flying threats at different speeds and altitudes. Naval warfare is becoming more challenging, and with that, the U.S. Navy is developing advanced weapon systems to increase the survivability of its large naval warships. Advanced weapon systems will act as a deterrent, 
discouraging potential adversaries, and enhancing the ability to defend against a wide range of threats, including aircraft, missiles, and submarines. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.